What's going on, y'all? So, um, my spirit has been nudging me a lot lately, um, especially today after uh, watching or listening to this podcast, uh, the Amen podcast, and, you know, they were speaking on some things that really resonated with uh, my testimony and just how uh, how Jesus saves, you know what I mean? We, we, we hear this, you know, Jesus saves, uh, only Jesus can save. And of course, that's the truth. And that's uh, that is what happened. And I'm about to tell y'all, you know, how he saved me. Uh, so um, if y'all can just not skip through this and you know, take the time and listen to me. You know, I, I would highly appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so I'm, I'm just going to speak solely from the heart. Um, actually, I'm going to let my spirit lead me. And so try to follow along, y'all. I'm just, this this ain't planned. This is just straight off the hip. And uh, I'm going to just let my uh, spirit lead me. But um, by the way, I was trying to... So the last like half hour, I've been trying to record on my GoPro, but uh, the enemy is obviously uh, oh so present because every time I would, first of all, I was speaking for about like 15 minutes and it only recorded like a minute of it. Uh, I wasn't paying attention to the record, you know, uh, light, um, you know, because I was so zoned into telling my freaking story, <laughs> my testimony. But of course, the enemy wants to... Uh, come and interrupt and uh you know not record anything i just said because he clearly doesn't want me to well it's not clear he obviously doesn't want me to share my story about his uh you know the guy that he obviously dislikes the most <laughs> you know uh but anyways um i'm gonna share you all uh, my testimony so please follow along and uh thank y'all so much for uh not you know, watching something else. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna get right into it. Um, what's going on, y'all? My name is uh, David, uh, David Tran. That's this. That's the only time I'm gonna tell y'all my uh, government name. Uh, y'all know me as Dave Wonders, but you know, I'm a human being first, uh, you know, um, and my name is David. And so <laughs> I'm gonna get right into it. I'm just, I'm just prolonging right now, okay, y'all? Anyways, <clears throat> I'm gonna get right into it. So, around this time last year, actually, um, was when uh, my life changed, um, you know? It was actually early March uh, when my life, really, when God took me on this journey, you know? And, uh, yeah, so, Around this time last year, I was still living at home. I was back in Massachusetts, um, you know, which is where I don't reside currently. I, I live in Dallas, Texas now. Um, but yeah, so around this time last year, I was back at home. And, uh, you know, I was throwing my life away at this, at, at, at this point, you know, at, at the time. And um, I was drinking every day, practically, you know, getting drunk just to run away from my problems and um, fill the void, you know, fill the void of emptiness and loneliness, sadness. Just about the same story you hear from anyone that drank uh, often, you know, and um, <clears throat> I was not working. I was freeloading off of my uh, my mother and uh, her boyfriend who, uh, you know, at the time recently just moved in and um, it was about the fourth month that he uh, had been living with us where things really changed. And um, I just remember <clears throat> being in my room, hungover, and it's around noontime. And down the hall, I hear my name called, you know, uh, from the kitchen because, uh, you know, my mother's boyfriend was working from home, you know. And uh, mind you, we did not have a relationship. Like, you know, I was a grown man. I'm a grown man. I was 25 at the time living at home. 
And, you know, the only time we would ever talk is hi or bye or, you know, if I have a question or something really important. But, you know, we never talked, you know. It, um, but anyways, <clears throat> I hear my name called, right? And so I'm like, all right. Uh, my heart just totally dropped down all the way to my toes, okay? Like, I'm, I know exactly what's about to go down, you know, because we didn't talk. And he just called my name from all the way. <laughs> you know, he didn't knock on my door, so... I'm like, okay, this is about to be real. So now I'm strolling down the hallway into the kitchen with my hoodie on, you know, hungover as all can be. Um, and, you know, he's pacing back and forth. Uh, he got his headphones on because he had just finished the, you know, home workout. So he's all revved up. He's He's got his arms crossed and he's just kind of thinking. And, you know, the suspense was killing me, I tell you, like, I just wanted him to cough up what he was going to say because, like, I, I'm an anxious person and I was just getting anxious. I was like, what? I'm like, I already know what's about to happen, okay, before it even happened. And, you know, he finally starts to speak and he goes, <clears throat> you know, Dave, like, these last four months, like, I, I've been watching you and, you know, I've been, you know, just trying to pay attention to you and, like, you really haven't been doing anything, you know? And um, basically, fast forward to him just kind of giving it straight to me, telling me that I have not been doing nothing, you know, which was the truth. You know, I was, I ain't mad at him. Like, I needed somebody to tell me that. And that was God, you know, telling, that was God's, you know, using him to, 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 to start this whole journey for me, but Anyways, you know, long story short, he goes, Dave, you have till the end of the month to move out. So now I'm like freaking out. I'm like, move out. I don't have any money. I'm not even working. Like, I don't have anywhere to go at this point. Okay. And so, um, <clears throat> so I'm like, all right. You know, well, actually, before I said, all right, I was trying to negotiate with him. I was like, hey, man, like, you know, I got a little money saved up. I didn't tell him that, but like I had a little money saved up. And I was like, hey, man, like if I just pitch in a little bit, you know, can I can I just extend my stay until, you know, I get situated and, you know, figure things out. <clears throat> but he was like he stood by his decision. He was like, no, you have till the end of the month to move out at this point. I accepted it for what it was and I said, okay. So I shook his hand and that was that. So now I'm like, all right, uh, I'm probably about to be homeless. Like not homeless, homeless on the streets, but I'm about to live out of my car. I'm about to live out of, uh, out of my car at this point because any other option I had was just not gonna work. You know, it just wasn't gonna work. So. I was like, I'm, I'm going to live out of my car. And, you know, I think a day goes by. I don't know if it was the same day, but <clears throat> that's besides the point. You know, just another backstory. Uh, just a backstory, I mean. Um, three years, uh, you know, before that day, uh, my mother found out she had a father, you know. Um, my mother is a, a product uh, of the Vietnam, she's a Vietnam War baby, you know, and um, so you know she 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 fled Vietnam at a young age and never knew her father. Okay, so we we did we did ancestry DNA, you know, about a few years ago, and um, you know she found out she had a father, and so three years ago, before that that moment had happened, uh, where I got kicked out my my grandfather um came up to visit you know my grandfather and his uh his wife came up to visit you know which i call my i mean she's practically my grandmother like that's shout out to grandma pam anyways um shout out to my grandparents but you know they came up to visit us um from you know i'm gonna tell y'all where because this is all part of the story they came up from a different state to visit us and i remember my grandfather telling me that 
anytime I want to come see him, let him know. And I'm always welcome, you know, to come down to see him. And so I've always remembered that and I kept that in the back of my mind. And so, <clears throat> you know, God spoke to me the day that I got kicked out, the day that things were getting real. You know, at the time I didn't know what was going on, but God said something to me. He said, call your grandpa John and tell him about what's going on and just shoot your shot. Just call him up. And so, you know, I remember being outside, just anxious, just pacing back and forth. And I called him and I just spilled the beans. I just told him like, what's going on? Like, I'm just hurting at this point, you know what I mean? And, <clears throat> and so I call him and um, and I say, Grandpa John, like, you know, da da da, like this is about to happen. And is there any chance I can come live with you? Cause you know, at this point I had been trying to move out of state and just start fresh and just, you know, I'm just down on my butt at this point. I don't have any money, <laughs> rent's crazy. Uh, Massachusetts like I couldn't afford it and so I asked him and literally two minutes two minutes in the conversation without any hesitation he goes come on down son I got a room wide open for you so I'm like I I'm about to move to Alabama you know like you know we finally hang up and I'm like oh I just I just told y'all by the way um you know he lives in Alabama. And so I'm like, I'm about to move. I'm about to drive 22 hours, you know, 22 to 24 hours all the way down to Alabama. Okay, so I'm like, shoot, like this is about to get real. This is the last state I ever thought that I'd ever live in. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm, I'm gonna be real. And so I'm like, shoot, <clears throat> all right. But I'm like, hey, you know, I, I really don't wanna drive all the way down by myself. That's a long drive. I would do it if I had to, but thank the good Lord that <clears throat> I didn't have to. And so, you know, um, I've been in contact through Ancestry DNA and social media with a, a cousin of mine. Shout out to Keith. Uh, Keith, if you are watching, bro, I love you, man. I miss you. And thank you for being a part of my story. But uh, yeah, you know, my cousin Keith is a, a was a vet, and you know, I, I I reached out. He lived in Alabama as well, and so I reached out to him. I was just like, "Hey, man, like you know, this is about to go on. I'm about to move to Alabama, like, bro. If I <clears throat> buy you a ticket up here to meet me, would you take this road trip back down to Alabama with me?" no hesitation he said yeah so i'm like god is just connecting everything for me right now like there's no way that this is just happening with no like it's just working out you know what i mean this is obviously god lining aligning everything for me <clears throat> so i'm like wow and so long story short i, I don't know how the time period is but it, it really wasn't very long maybe a couple of weeks he flew up to logan International Airport in Boston, and we met for the first time. We had been in contact through social media via FaceTime, so we weren't complete strangers, you know. But I met him face to face for the first time at the airport, and that's when our trip began. And so, you know, next thing you know, we're on a 22 hour road trip. Uh, we stopped by in Pennsylvania for a couple of nights. Stopped by in Virginia for a couple of nights. Shout out to everybody that played a part in this story. Um, you know, it just made the trip so much better. And you know, finally, I end up in Alabama. And you know, mind you, I wasn't raised in a Christian household. I knew God was like real, but like I believed in a higher power. I, I, I was one of, you know, I just, 
I wasn't there yet, you know? I was still soul searching, still figuring things out, just like a lot of us are, you know? But for the next six months, you know, mind you, I don't know if I said this, but you know, that entire side of the family that I never knew up until, you know, a few years ago, that whole entire side of my family is Christian, <laughs> you know? I grew up in, I grew up around Vietnamese. I'm half Vietnamese, you know? I'm sure y'all been following along. I may not look like it, but <clears throat> both of my parents are half white and half Vietnamese. Both of my parents are a product of the Vietnam War. Same story, you know, except I don't know my grandfather on my dad's side. Unfortunately, he had passed away before I got the chance to rest his soul. But yeah, you know, um, <clears throat> this whole entire side of my family is Christian, okay? And so now I'm living with my grandparents, you know, my grandfather and his wife <clears throat> uh, for the next six months. And, um, you know, <clears throat> they treated me with so much love. They treated me like I was their son. Like they treated me with so much love that I've never felt before. The love that I have even felt from my own mother and from my own you know, immediate family, you know, I mean, right, but, <clears throat> and never once did they, you know, force me to go to church, you know, uh, they never shoved God or Jesus down my throat, they just lived, lived it, they just lived like good Christians and lived like God wanted wants us to live, and they just live with love. That's it. And I just remember, you know, just a couple of weeks before I moved to Dallas, you know, <clears throat> we we got into a discussion about, you know, the the current, you know, political state that we're in and the just how the world has been, you know, with COVID and just it was a mess, you know. The world was a mess and it still very much so is, you know. Don't get it twisted. But I just remember bringing up, you know, I brought this up. I brought up God <clears throat> and like, I just started asking questions like, you know, and I remember specifically asking them, how do you have God in your life? Like, how does that work? Like, I'm so clueless at this point. I mean, I'm sure just, just like anybody who, isn't, you know, a believer of Christ goes through like, I, I'm just like, how does this work? You know what I mean? And they were just like, Dave, you know, you just gotta <clears throat> accept Jesus in your heart and just repent to your sins and, you know, the whole nine. And I'm just like, how do I do that? Like, I don't even know what to do. And they were like, you know what, Dave, let us just say the salvation prayer and you just copy us. So I'm like, okay, you know, like I, I don't even know what I'm getting myself into at this point, but I was so down in life and I know that God is good. We all know God is good, whether you, you know, believe in God or not, you know, we all know that God is good. God is not bad. God created everything, but I knew that I needed God. I knew I needed help. I've tried my own way. I've tried every. I've tried everything, okay? I tried to change my diet at one point. I was a freaking vegan, vegetarian, pescatarian, schmemetarian, whatever, the, you know what I mean? I've tried every possible thing to try to fill that void, you know, make myself happy, you know? And nothing worked. It got me, got me to getting kicked out of my house, you know? And so I'm just like, at this point, I'm like, I wanna try this God thing, you know? like. I'm gonna go with it. And so long story short, we're saying the salvation prayer and we get to the point where, you know, you, you you acknowledge that you're a born sinner. And I remember stopping the whole salvation prayer and I'm like, sinner, I'm, like, I'm no sinner. You know, at this time, like I'm thinking uh, a sin is like you murder somebody or something drastic or something crazy like that. 
and <clears throat> I'm like, I just stopped the conversation and the, you know, my, my, my grandma Pam is just looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> and, and I'm just like, you know what, let me just like stop and let me just let them do uh, continue on because they obviously know what they're doing. They, they are Christians. They believe in God. And the way they want, they, the way they live, I want to live, you know. <clears throat> and so I'm like, you know, proceed. And by the end of that, uh, by the end of that, that salvation prayer, that was when I was saved. And um, <laughs> for a while, I would uh, question the authenticity of that moment. But, you know, looking back now, I don't question it one bit because that's what the enemy wants, wants you to do, you know. But, but I tell y'all, like, God puts you in situations where the only person that can get you out of that situation is him, okay? And never in my life would I have thought that I would believe in Jesus or, you know, if you asked me six months ago or a year ago or whatever about Jesus, I probably would have just ignored you or, you know, out of my own ignorance or whatever you know i just jesus wouldn't be in the picture and it just goes to show you how powerful he is and how powerful the love of god you know we all know that god is love and that's what reeled me in <clears throat> and that's when i just took that leap of faith to have faith <laughs> you know what i mean i knew that everything that i was doing in my life was not right you know, like, cause I wasn't, I wasn't bearing any type of fruit, you know, with the way I was living previous to, uh, having Christ in my life and yeah. And, um, I wouldn't want to have it any other way. I mean, that's my, my, my story y'all. Um, thank y'all so much for listening oh i forgot to say um you know two weeks after that i ended up moving to dallas you know nothing too significant about the story but i know that this is god ordained you know god situated this for sure as well you know i had been visiting a friend shout out to my boy eddie if you're watching this eddie bro love you man miss you um i'll see you soon but uh you know when i was in alabama i'd visit you know my friend Eddie, uh, you know, a few times because I knew I didn't want to stay in Alabama because the opportunities uh, weren't there for me. And so, and I wanted to live on my own. And, you know, after visiting Dallas a few times over the summer, I fell in love with him. Once again, I took that leap of faith. And here I am. Um, my story is still being written. Um, and I just, Hope that this story of mine really encourage or inspire or, you know, just do something for y'all, you know? I know that God wanted me to share this and I'm sharing and I hope that everything made sense and yeah. I love y'all. Thank y'all so much for making it all the way to this point of the video. I know that not a lot of people have 25 minutes to just watch one person talk, <laughs> you know. And so if you did so, I love y'all. Thank you so much. Jesus loves you and peace.